Welcome, this is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. And I just wanted to take a minute to let you guys know that I love being here on these calls and we do these Facebook Lives. We also host Zoom calls three times a week and you're welcome to call in and speak directly with a pharmacist and you can ask me any questions you might have about your pharmaceuticals or reversing and regenerating your body. My goal is to assist you in mastering your own biochemistry and once you learn this knowledge, which is very powerful, you can take it from there. You can take this knowledge and utilize it as you want. We've been doing disease topics, you know, sprinkled throughout the, the Facebook Lives that we're doing. We're also going to be doing some YouTube Lives later. It, ideally, um, you know, that'll all be happening at the same time. But nevertheless, these calls are three days a week, Tuesdays 10 a.m. at um, on Pacific Time, also Tuesdays and Thursdays 6 p.m. Pacific Time. So that's three calls a week. You have a chance to get a hold of us. 10 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays and then also Tuesdays and Thursdays 6 p.m. Pacific time. We want to hear from you. If you're watching this video, please let us know where you're watching from, your city, state, and country. We'd love to find out um, where you're calling in from or where you're listening or watching. There is also a podcast that I do weekly. I do a podcast on SoundCloud. It's called Big Pharma Nation. And on that podcast, I do discuss all things biochemical, uh, medical system policy, insurance policy. It's all about technically the country and kind of the world that we live in, but Big Pharma Nation is what I chose to call the podcast. And I love to discuss medical politics on that show. I've had some really amazing guests and I'm continuing to gather guests. And if you're somebody who would like to be on Big Pharma Nation, let me know. I'd love to have you as a guest. So we're going to go ahead and launch in today's disease topic. And I did have a friend that wanted to discuss acid reflux. And a lot of you out there, you might also know it, know it as gastroesophageal reflux disease, also known as GERD. Uh, acid reflux can also come across as indigestion. And, but we'll just focus on the term acid reflux. And what that technically means is that your stomach doesn't like what's happening and it's starting to... Uh, you know, you'll feel it in your throat or maybe when you lay down at night you'll feel a burning or maybe you'll wake up with a bad taste in your mouth, you'll feel a burning into your esophagus up into this part of your body and again a lot of people they'll feel it in their throat or they'll wake up with a sore throat. If you wake up with a sore throat every day you might want to think about potentially that there is some sort of acid reflux going on. And what's amazing about acid reflux, and actually what's wonderful, is it's usually one of the first indicators that you're beginning to get sick. And if you do not pay attention to it, and what I mean by sick, I mean ill. It's kind of a marker saying, hey, you're eating stuff that isn't working for us, your body is telling you that, and you need to look at what's going on. Now if you ignore acid reflux, which is definitely something that the current medical model encourages to do, and it usually encourages us to ignore it, and how it does that is by the uh, promoting of Pepsid AC or Zantac, uh, also known as ranitidine, uh, Prilosec, um, Prevacid, you know those commercials where they show the guy eating the double-decker cheeseburger and his kids are like, no dad, don't eat it, You're, you can't handle that. And then the dad whips out the uh, Pepsi AC and he's like, don't worry, I, I'm going to take Pepsi AC. And then there's cheering. Well, that, that is actually counterintuitive because what dad is actually doing is he's stopping the acid production in his stomach. So technically he can eat something that his body doesn't want him to eat because that's the sign why you, you get burping and belching and the acid reflux. And he's taking a medication to stop the acid in his stomach so he can eat it. And there's a lot of biochemical drawbacks to that. He's actually, he's, he is really hurting himself. So taking a drug that you, will allow you to do something that really isn't good for you is, that's backwards. So the reason your body, so for example, with that man, the reason his body was giving him problems and acid reflux is because his body's like, hey, I don't want you to double cheeseburger with bacon and, and all that. You know, I want you to eat smaller meals. And so that's why dad gets sick when he eats the double-decker cheeseburger. So we want to think about that, how counterintuitive this, this advertising is. 
So acid reflux is a, is a way your body's saying something's going on in my digestion. And if you ignore this by continuing to take products such as Pepsid AC or Prevacid or Prilosec long term, you're consistently suppressing the acid in your stomach. You are going to be consistently reducing the ability of your body to digest your food. And then hence, you're going to be consistently reducing the availability of the nutrients because if your body can't break down the food that it's eating, it's not going to be able to absorb the nutrients that you are putting in because the body can't break it down through acid, can't break down the, for example, the double-decker cheeseburger, and it can't break it down and hence you're not going to be able to get the nutrients into your bloodstream. So long-term use of these medications, very, very dangerous, not, not ideal. Short-term use may be based off of, again, a bleeding ulcer. Very handy, very powerful medications, but again, short-term use only. So for some of you out there, you might say, well, I do have acid reflux tonight. I have it right now, and you're telling me not to take Pepsid AC or, or Zantac long-term. You know, what can I do? And what I've always advised my patients to do for the last 15 years is to take Rolaids or Tums. The reason being is Rolaids or Tums, it's a very short burst of what is considered a basic um, acid reducer and it's just going to briefly reduce the acid in your stomach and then you're going to, you know, you'll have time, you'll be able to sleep, etc. But then tomorrow you're going to want to start thinking about doing some things differently. So one of the ways you can easily remedy, you know, acid reflux is like I said, a Tums or a Rolaids, but then long-term goals, how would you consistently reverse that? And one, one of the quickest ways is eating smaller meals. So number one, if you ate smaller portions and really tuning in with your body that you're, you know, you're not hungry anymore. But at the same time, there's a caveat to that that's a little complicated for people is if they're eating foods that aren't nutrient dense, which means they're devoid of any nutrients, then you're going to constantly be hungry and you're going to stuff yourself. That's very normal. So you're not going to get satiated. You're going to continually to eat. You're going to get really stuffed and hence you're going to end up with acid reflux. So you want to eat smaller meals and you want to make sure that you're eating nutrient dense food very important regrettably the majority of our foods out there they do not have the nutrients in them to you know due to farm massive wide farming techniques and the whole processes that are going on if we're not networking with local farmers and really seeing where we're getting our food from we're, we're probably not getting the nutrients that we need at the level that we need them so we want to think about that so but for those of you out there smaller meals nutrient-dense food. Those two things alone could really help acid reflux. Another great remedy I love is elevating the head of your of your bed. So when you're sleeping at night, you want to put uh, maybe a couple pieces of plywood in between the mattress and the box spring, and then your body's going to be a little higher, and then the stomach won't be able to run the acid up into your throat or into your esophagus during the night. So that's really going to help too. Again, like I said, elevating the head of your bed with some um, wood or people use two by fours. I've had some patients tell me they use two by fours. That really helps them. So that would be three things. Smaller meals, nutrient dense food, elevating the head of your bed. Another great one that I, I recommend to everyone out there is digestive enzymes. So that would be the fourth remedy. And digestive enzymes would be something you could take that would help you digest your food. So let's say you knew you overate you could take some digestive enzymes during your meal or right at the end of your meal or maybe even before bed. You can take digestive enzymes on empty stomach and you can also take them with your food during your meal. So if you did that, that's going to take the pressure off of your body's digestive system. It's going to assist in the digesting of these nutrients and it's going to help you, you know, get the job done quicker. So that's a brief overview of acid reflux. So we're definitely going to hashtag this as acid reflux. We will be back on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time and then also 6 p.m. Pacific time. And we're really happy you guys joined us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.